Hello， 大家好，我是新火矿石 CEO 许昕，呃，很高兴接受东区的采访。Hi everyone, my name is Joyce Yang. I'm a global coin research. I'm here at Block Temple Live, a Asian Blockchain Summit 2019 in Taipei, and I'm so excited to be joined by Xu Xin from Sparkpool. Hi, Xu Xin. Yeah, hi guys. How's it going? Hello. How are you liking the conference? So far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah, good vibe. Yes, yes, that's for sure. So, can you tell us a little bit more about Sparkpool and how you guys started? Ah, yeah, sure. Um, Sparkpool was uh, originated uh, by the community about three years ago uh, from the Chinese uh, Ethereum commu tech community called Ethans. Uh, and we, we went to commercially about a year and a half ago at the beginning of uh, 2018. And now uh, we started with Ground Zero and now we're about uh, 23 to 20, 24% of uh, Ethereum's global hash rate. So far, the maybe the second largest Ethereum mining coin in the world right now. Now, when it comes to when you're a Chinese mining pool and mm -hmm. then you're also having contributing so much power and hash rate to the, the, the community. There must be a lot of scrutiny from folks outside of China who ask there's so much centralization in China. Yeah, they, there <laughs> is. <laughs> I think it's fine. Um, yeah. I think once the power is actually controlled by the good people, it's fine. <laughs> yes, that's, I, I agree, I agree. Yeah, because uh, otherwise Ethereum had been destroyed uh, more than once if we are, we are evil. Yeah. yeah. So, is how much of the hash power is actually coming out of China right now? From the I think more than more than sixty percent. More than sixty percent. Yeah. Wow. So that's as much as Bitcoin. Um, I think so. Yeah, pretty much similar. Yeah, yeah. That's really amazing to hear. Can you tell us a little bit more about how Ethereum has evolved as um, you know a topic of focus in the community in China over the last few years? In China, ah, that's interesting because um, I think at the early stage of Ethereum, I mean the early. 2015 or 16, um, only tech people are actually interested or know about Ethereum, and th at that moment it was it was a lot of amazing ideas and uh, talks, uh, um, uh, debates about Ethereum, how, how it's going to change the world and stuff like that. And I think once the price of Ethereum actually goes up in uh, 2017, and people come into the community and become uh, more like uh, um, profit-driven people or we see investors, uh, then then the then the vision of Ethereum is kind of uh, disappeared for like a year or two, okay. in my opinion. <laughs> and uh, everyone was crazy about ICO and stuff like that. Right. And uh, people actually behind Ethereum are like nowhere. We cannot find them. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Well, Vitalik uh, is always there, though. Yeah, he of goes course, to China but, all the time. Yeah, yeah, kind of. But uh, people surround him is no longer the attack people, right. in my opinion. But uh, I think uh, at the beginning of this year, when the price dropped and uh, when the hype went away, and uh, uh, the tech people come back again, I think. Uh, and then they, they, they recognize the new topics like uh, DeFi and uh, stablecoin and stuff like that, and become, uh, the thing become more interesting uh, than before now. Yeah, yeah. And it sounds like Sparkpool plays a really involved community member within China as well in supporting the Ethereum community. Yeah, um, it happens to be in Hangzhou because uh, I'm personally I'm from Hangzhou, I'm raised and born there, and, uh, and like uh, what I say, I'm token and uh, like. Uh, uh, public chains like Nervos, because uh, Jen, uh, the CEO of Nervos, uh, has been involved in Ethereum at the early stage. We, we have been friends since um, early stage, very early, and uh, we have already we have always trying to actually push the um, Ethereum community back in China and uh, try to maintain it in the relatively calm and stable way right. of discussing the technology instead of only hype of uh, price. So we have been always like that. That's where the Ethereum community comes from, and. Uh, it has been like that for four years. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so far, we've seen a kind of an increase, at least more of quality people coming in since the bear market, and then now we're back to the bull market. So, so, so. Are we? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> for, for some time, maybe. Okay. You know, for, um, I, I don't know how to predict the future either. So, <laughs> sure. So, so, at this point, it sounds like, you know, Nervous is about to um, launch as well, mm -hmm. with, um, as well as, you know, I'm Token obviously has gathered a lot of attention in China as well as the rest yeah. of Asia. So, so Hangzhou. Hangzhou. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all in Hangzhou, which is yeah. really fascinating because I yeah. think most folks, at least from the West Hemisphere, don't really know about Hangzhou as yeah, a city, and then now it's it's, a it's, city. it's it's come out as you know a great city to actually uh -huh. contribute to the Ethereum community. Yeah, yeah. So, in, in do you have any thoughts about you know the kind of what um, the staking environment will look like in the next few years in China? Staking environment, totally. 
just essentially you guys are also also participating in Cosmos as well now. Okay. Right. So so you know obviously a lot of projects are coming to China uh -huh. looking for validators, yeah. looking for participants, and how do you evolve or foresee this type of uh, community to build out and grow? Um. I think uh, the, the reason we run staking is more about Ethereum's going to POS in the future, and uh, we have been uh, researching, developing, and uh, preparing for that moment to come. Uh, so that we are using Cosmos or maybe Polkadot or <coughs> other um, POS chain for testing our uh, existing infrastructure. And uh, the reason we can do um, relatively cheaper uh, staking fee to attract more. Um, people to um, join our pool is so we actually can share our um, current infrastructure with our POW pool. Because <clears throat> uh, in the staking um, uh, chance, uh, the, the the barrier of technology is relatively lower. Everyone could be a validator, but uh, the thing is, um, <clears throat> they actually need more sense of security compared to POW. Because POW with the, its barrier of technology, it actually clean out a lot of uh, uh, incapable. Um, like uh, operators, but uh, in the POS uh, world, uh, everyone can be an operator, and uh, no no advanced technology is actually needed. Right. But <coughs> once uh, if you if you read the news, you will see that uh, I think last week's uh, first uh, uh, double sign uh, accident was done on Cosmos, and one of the validator was slashed and uh, permanently jailed. Uh, permanently jailed. Jailed. Mm -hmm. So that he can no longer run the validator. Oh wow! I think that's uh, that's a good uh, example of uh, people with less technology, uh, um, with less sense of uh, security, joining the uh, POS uh, community because it's it, do it does not need actually that much technology. Right, right. right. <coughs> but actually, the security uh, sense or uh, the network security by, uh, provided by POS needs more attention. <coughs> on technology compared to POW. Right, right, right. Is it something that Ethereum 2.0 is trying to resolve as well? And, you know, the Vitalik talked about sharding is one of the big focuses. I'm not sure if you have been following. Um, sure, uh, but to my, my attitude to Ethereum uh, 2.0 is always love and hate because we're miners. <laughs> uh, but uh, we are always supporting Ethereum to develop. And we have been preparing uh, relative infrastructure and uh, tools for Ethereum 2.0 or 2.0 uh, staking since I think beginning of 2018. Because in our in the in the early roadmap, uh, the the, the 2.0 not 2.0 but the POS Ethereum should actually come at the end of 2018. So we have everything prepared at the early 2018, but nothing happened until like even now. <laughs> so yeah. it's also the love and hate uh, part of the the story. Uh, we are always supporting Vitalik and the team. Yeah. To actually conquer the the problem. Yeah. yeah. How often do you do dialogue with the core team and, and, and kind of stay in touch? Uh, we have been we have been friends for years. Not 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 uh, only Vitalik, but also like the, the research team in Taiwan, and okay. uh, yeah. we talk every half a year maybe. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes we meet some because uh, the, the 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 good the interesting part of being being the pool is we are always at the front line. We are running the. The, the chain 24-7 and uh, once we meet some small creature and uh, interesting we see some interesting performance we actually talk, talk to the teams because yeah, yeah. the teams are more like doctors in the in the in the college and they don't really know what's happening they don't in the hospital every day, right? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and uh, yeah that's an interesting dynamic and, uh, that's really interesting yeah yeah um how do you um engage with the ethereum teams other than kind of talk to them directly and and in the sense that you know, I think there are not enough participants and supporters of the technology space in general, and in blockchain, in the technology front in, mm -hmm. in Asia. You know, most people are, you know, there for the speculation, they're there focusing on you know, Bitcoin mining, proof of work, and, and here you guys are, you know, with a very strong focus on um, proof of stake. Um, how do you foresee this to grow, um, this, 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 this industry to grow as, a, you know, as, as more projects coming out with more proof of stake? You mean Asia or in general? Asia, yes. Okay. Asia. Um, I would say I, I actually don't know because maybe the the, the personality or the nature of uh, Asians like us, uh, they are more focused on uh, speculation and more profit driven. But yeah. uh, but they are always someone like us. We are young, relatively speaking, and we don't we don't have that much needs for money or whatever. We are we are more interesting to see the revolution uh, change of the technology and. Uh, um, those people have been around, like us. We have been around very early, and uh, we have been trying to attract more people 
like us to join us. We are trying to support them uh, in different ways. Um, and we never fade away because speculators come and go, but we, ne we, are, not, we are always around. So, um, and uh, like I, I mentioned, like uh, Jan, Ben from Token, yeah. and each of us, uh, we build a, the great, uh, some great technology and a great company and build good teams. Yeah. We're always trying to yeah, make it happen. So is, yeah, is there other companies or projects that are also so uh, very, very um, there are. adamant about yeah or yeah. supporting? Um, yeah, there are, and uh, those people always actually kind of attract each other. They all become friends, and uh, that's how the community grows yeah, in China. I, I, and I, I, it's it's more yeah. underground, right? <laughs> they barely go to those conferences because uh, in China conferences are more like uh, profit driven and stuff. Right, like right, 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 right. But uh, for. Mm, for Ethereum, because um, uh, as uh, we, we're miners, right? Uh, so my relationship with, uh, with Ethereum is all is like uh, love and hate again. Because uh, we, we love it, the technology, we support it. But sometimes the the core teams or the Ethereum community, they, they always uh, uh, suspect miners are the evils, and that's that's essentially the what they you suspect. Got a bad rep for <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they have been that like that for three years. So now I'm more calm. To Ethereum. Before I was pretty, pretty like a fanatic, and <laughs> we, we have been super support Ethereum. But now we, we, we want to be more neutral, because that that's what they uh, suspect we are, and we are just be behave like that. Right, right, right. I think mining <laughs> fools always, you know, are really, for example, a lot of the mining fools say, yeah, <laughs> they're more, yeah, they're more low key. People are just there, you know, they're more practical in general. Mm -hmm. I think from the folks I met. So far, and they just want to, you know, do their own thing, right? And you don't have to. I think that's the good business. and bad. Uh, the good part is. Uh, I, agree. I agree. The good part is that's how they're supposed to be. They should, they should not have too much, you know, idea about, uh, <clears throat> or to have too much claim about things. Otherwise, they will have incentive to do the wrong thing. Um, the bad part is, but uh, they are actually very important and key uh, of the of the of the community, and they're supposed yeah. to actually. Deliver some, you know, attitudes. Yes, yes. yes. But yeah. I tried, it, but failed <laughs> because uh, the community don't care about what the miners said. <laughs> really, I was yeah. surprised. So actually, I was just at ZCon, at, Z, uh, mm -hmm. at Zcash conference last weekend, and Vitalik was there as well, supporting privacy and the technology there. And you know, one of the participants who asked about um, Asia wanted to know, you know, how can we engage with the mining community in China mm -hmm. and Asia because we know that they are. You know, serving so much hash, serving so much hash power, but at the same time, do we care about governance? Do they care about participating in the community? Mm -hmm. And I think there's an increasing interest, actually, from those folks who want to learn about Asia. Yeah, I would say so, but the people are afraid to come to it, China. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, it's, it's a stereotype. It has been like that for years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm really hoping that. that could change at the same time. Yeah, honestly. we are trying to go out and talk to them as well. That's great. That's yeah. great. Because uh, people have the stereotype of. Uh, uh, and Chinese crypto people are more like uh, speculators, but they are actually technology being developed there. I agree. And more friendly technology. I agree. Yeah. yeah. What are the next plans for Sparkpool and other <coughs> Ours, products that ah, you're rolling out? Interesting. We are, we are researching on DeFi now. Oh, really? Yeah, we oh, are. Oh, very nice. That's why blockchain people are not, we, we are not originally the miners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we are trying to see how, um, actually, like, uh, um, actually, it's for the miners. So we are trying to see how we can actually leverage our resource to help the miner to be more fair treated with uh, with decentralized finance uh, institutes because um, uh, now they are um, borrowing and then ending from the centralized ones with high interest to to expand expand their business. But actually, we can we can we can we can do DeFi. We can we can use uh, more um, decentralized ways to finance their business, and actually, that's more crypto native to them as well. That's really interesting, and I remember Maker Dao was one of the kind of first folks of who went to China with Chow, actually. Kind yeah, of he's in our office next to us. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that, that's really funny. Other, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, but at the same time, DeFi is definitely a growing interest, and at least in the U.S., you know, projects have had you know problems yeah. with liquidity and really volume. Mm -hmm. But I think that's definitely less of a problem. Because I, I, I think like uh, for DeFi projects like Compound and uh, Dharma, yeah. they they have enough uh, supply of. Uh, of, of, of money, but they don't have the need of borrowing. They cannot find the needs. Uh, but actually, miners are a good, uh, very native um, need of borrowing, yeah. Um, yeah. at least in China. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, for so sure. we are trying to actually to see if as a Sparkle, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a brand, as a miner trust, if we can bridge the DeFi and those needs.
that's hard for that's our research that's hard very for. exciting yeah yeah and that's the main focus now and not, not main focus but it's one, one of, of the, the exciting focus, focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah for sure for sure and where do you want to take the spark pool you know say five years down the road five years that's pretty long way because <laughs> uh, i think uh, in this uh in this uh, uh, blockchain industry, we always plan, we don't plan three months. That's good enough. That's pretty good. Things yeah. change. Yeah, for <laughs> yeah. sure, for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much again for yeah, your time. Thank you, that Joyce. was really fun. Yeah. Thanks everyone for tuning in. This is Block Temple Live at Asian Blockchain Summit 2019. Bye bye. 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 <laughs>